Now the future Zamasu has arrived. The heroes claim that they were right about the two being allies, so Zamasu corrects them by saying that they're kindred spirits. Regardless, Kale gives their a blue form against to fight Zamasu, but her attacks are blocked. They were fighting evenly until Kale Black joined, as Aiden drove Kale into a corner. Super Saiyan 2 featured Kale then joined, as she and Kale then fought Zamasu and Kale Black together. When she stabbed Zamasu with her sword, she was surprised to see it heal instantly. After being hit by her resist blast, he revealed that he has an immortal body. Kale Black had fired a black resist blast at them, as Zamasu grabbed them from behind. So they were defeated, but Zamasu was unharmed. Black and Zamasu were going to finish them off, but Vegeta went into his blue form again and destroyed it with his god final flash. He then reversed his base form and passes out, as they realized Kale and Future Kale escaped. Future Yajirobe had saved them, while Future Mind the soldiers then came in and saved Vegeta. Mind then put them in a time machine and sent them back to the past, as Black and Zamasu noticed the time machine at the last second. They then arrive in the past, which Trunks sees, so he calls for Bulma once they do. Regardless, in Universe 10, Zamasu and Gawasu were watching the battle between Kale and Hit from the Tournament of Destroyers. Zamasu was shocked to see Kale use God Key, but he didn't ask about the Super Dragon Balls on the screen. So, Kawasu explained to him how they can grant any wish after being gathered. Later, he went to Zuno's planet, as he knocked out Zuno's attendant and demanded to know everything about the Super Dragon Balls. Since he was getting impatient, he threatened Zuno, so he told him how to summon Super Shenron, but he also mentions he must wait a year until they can be used. He then demands to know their location and to know more about Kale. Back on Earth, Bulma gives the three Saiyan sensor beams. Once they get up, they explain everything about Kale Black's new transformation and that Zamasu is her ally. Beerus, Whis, and Shin then arrived, as Shin explains he was contacted by Zuno, saying that Zamasu confronted him about Kale and the Super Dragon Balls. Vegeta then caught the gods upon future Zamasu, his immortality, and Kale Black's rosé form. Back in Universe 10, Gwasu ran out of tea, so he tried to call for Zamasu to make more, but he received no response. So he realized Zamasu was gone. Back on Earth, Beerus was wondering why Black's tea was so similar to Zamasu's. So he theorizes that Zamasu was searching for enough power to assert his justice and had a clone of Kale made to serve him. However, they didn't realize that Zamasu most likely killed Gwasu and stole the Time Rings. Shin then offered to take them to Universe 10 but told them to act peacefully since Zamasu hasn't done anything wrong yet. Back in the future, Mai was desperately trying to inspire the soldiers to wait for the return of the heroes. And in Universe 10, Beerus, Whis, Shin, and Kale approach Gwasu, asking where Zamasu is. He says that Zamasu has been gone all morning, so Beerus asks if his behavior has been suspicious. Gwasu said that Zamasu had his doubts about how things are, but he's enlightened now, as an unbelievably calm Zamasu appears, saying he brought Gwasu his tea. When Zamasu asked why they were there, Beerus said it was because Kale wanted to fight her again, so Zamasu accepted this challenge. However, Beerus said they had to leave, as Whisen gives Gwasu a gift of snacks and tea. Once they leave, they don't go far from Universe 10, as Beerus and Whisen explain to Shin that Zamasu intends to kill Gwasu. Back in the future, Kale Black and Zamasu discuss killing Kale, but Zamasu told her that if she kills Kale too quickly, she'd lose the opportunity to tap into Kale's legendary power that Vegeta mentioned. Though she says she is satisfied with her power, which Zamasu finds it ironic that they have to use a mortal to eliminate all mortals. Regardless, back with Mai, he swears to protect the kids, even if she has to by herself. Back in the present, even though it isn't his future counterpart, Trunks would berate future Kale for moping around after losing. He would then attack her and knock her down, then demand that she stands up, so she is supposed to be a Saiyan. He would also say something along the lines of he doesn't know why his future self would have ever looked up to her, which angered her. Then in Universe 10, while Gawasu was eating the snacks and drinking his tea, Zamasu used his God Split Cut to kill him. Whisen were wound time, which shocked Kale as Whisen never done this before in this timeline. Regardless, they then go to Universe 10 and Whis puts a glove over Zamasu's hand. Beerus, Whis, and Shin then explain to Gawasu that Zamasu planned to kill him, as Whis removes the glove from Zamasu's hand. Zamasu then tried to attack them, but Beerus uses Sakai to destroy Zamasu. Back on Earth, after fighting with Trunks, Peter Kale realized that he was trying to teach her to win no matter who the enemy was. After thanking him, they are interrupted by the gods and Kale returning. Beerus then says that Kale Black should disappear since Zamasu was destroyed, but future Kale points out that the androids didn't disappear in her timeline after they were defeated in the present. Though, Beerus says it is different if a god kills a god, so future Kale hoped he is right. Before future Kale left to see if the future was safe, Bulma convinced her to stay for dinner. Kale eventually decided to go with her future counterpart in case her timeline wasn't safe. Trunks then asked about the future, so she explained it to him, and after she did, she thanked Beerus for his help in destroying Zamasu. She then asked Vegeta to come with her as well, which he agreed, so they all entered the time machine alongside Bulma. When they arrive, they realize the future hasn't changed, so they go to the base of Earth's resistance. They then found the unconscious Mai, so future Kale gave her a sensu beam. 
Afterwards, they went and found Kale Black and Zamasu. Vegeta turned into his blue form and Black went into her rose form as they began to fight, with his plan being to defeat Black first. Kale then said to them that they knew Black's identity, but this is when Black reveals that they are wrong, as she is a version of Zamasu that wished for Kale's body then killed the Kale who had her body stolen. Future Zamasu then explained how he teamed up with Black, as she then explains that because of the time ring, what happens to her past self doesn't affect her current self. Regardless, they both attack the Saiyans, which causes Kale and Vegeta to go into their blue forms while Future Kale goes into her legendary Super Saiyan 2 form. Black then helps knock the heroes away, as she then finishes her story about how she killed Future Gawasu and teamed up with Future Zamasu. They then went on to wish for Zamasu to be immortal, and then they killed every Supreme Kai, which also killed all the Gods of Destruction. After knocking away future Kale and Vegeta, they team up on Kale, and after cornering her, they explain what happened after Zamasu took her body. Mainly, they explain how they killed her in the 18, which angered Kale and caused her to go into her legendary blue form. At first she puts them on the defensive, but Black is powered up by this beating, so she then uses her divine lasso to defeat Kale. Black and Zamasu then turn their attention to future Kale and Vegeta, as they call her a sinner for creating a new time ring, and if she didn't travel back in time before, they never would have done this. While Zamasu holds back Vegeta, Future Kale grew angry and attacked Black, though she was easily defeated. Mai then tried to rush in to save her, but they were stopped by Future Kale turning into a legendary version of the Super Saiyan Rage form. Future Kale then takes on both Black and Zamasu, as she manages to hold them both off. Vegeta went into his blue form and jumps into the fight, but Future Kale eventually convinced him to get into the time machine and return to the past. After they return to the present, Kale is put into a healing pod, while Vegeta then explains Zamasu's true identity to the gods. Since Beerus was now satisfied, the two gods leave. After Kale recovered, all the heroes and their families met at Capital Corporation, which is when Piccolo suggested that they should learn the evil containment wave. So, Kale then went to Kame House to learn this technique from Master Roshi, while Vegeta went to train at the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. Meanwhile, Beerus and Whis went to Universe 10 and told Gawasu that the future didn't change, so he decided to take responsibility and do something about it since Zamasu was his apprentice. Back in the future, Kale was defeated and injured, so she was given a sensor beam, as they didn't tell her what Mai is doing. Mai was trying to kill Black with a special bullet, but she survived and found their location. Though, before they can be killed, they are saved by the arrival of future Kale. She then goes into her rage form and Black goes into her rosé form as they begin to fight. She seemingly defeated Black, then when she turned her attention to Zamasu, she was stabbed from behind by Black. This is when the heroes then return to the future as they finish their training, as future Kale then fell unconscious. The heroes then prepared to face Black and Zamasu while Bulma hid, but when Black arrived, she destroyed the time machine. When Zamasu started rambling, Vegeta asked about the urn, and thankfully Kale didn't forget it in the time machine and she didn't forget the paper amulet in the past, as she isn't as scatterbrained as Goku was. As they prepared to fight, Gawasu and Shin arrived, but Kale and Vegeta protected them from being killed. They had both turned into their blue forms, as Vegeta began to fight Black and Kale began to fight Zamasu. With the Black and Vegeta fight, she had turned into a rosé form, but she was still being beaten back by Vegeta. After Kale went into her legendary blue form, she was beating down Zamasu, which still from helping his ally. Since she had to earn in the paper amulet, once she eventually knocked Zamasu into the ground, she would use the evil containment wave against him. After being thrown around in a green spiral, he is forced into the urn, which Kale then used the paper amulet to seal. Kale Black's rift had caused clones of her to appear, which they were all beating down Vegeta. However, when she noticed that Zamasu's energy completely disappeared, she teleported away to gather her composure. This caused the rift and by extension the clones of her, to disappear. The heroes then regrouped with Bulma and the others, as she had managed to repair the time machine. While they were trying to rest, Black was coming up with a plan of her own to face the heroes. She had now seen Kale's legendary power, and even got to fight against it, so she thinks she would be able to tap into it herself. With her godly potential, it wouldn't take her long to do, as she then teleported in front of the heroes. They were confused about what Black was up to, since she was in her base form, but she quickly powered up into her rosé form. She didn't stop there, though, as she continued to power up. Her body stayed the same size, as she was introduced to Kale's mastered version of the legendary form. However, her hair color changed from a light pink to a deep purple. She then introduced herself as Super Saiyan Shiraz Kale Black. Since I wanted this form to be purple in color, and the rosé form was named after rosé wine, I named this form after Shiraz wine since Shiraz is described as violet or deep purple in color, which I only wanted this form to be purple in color so they can symbolize royalty, which would fit with Black's pomposity. The heroes were shocked to see Black and Mansion tap into the legendary power, but they prepared to face her nonetheless. Even with both Kale and Vegeta facing Black, her power was continuing to rise exponentially, so she was beating down the two Saiyans. All of their attacks were easily being blocked by Kale Black, and eventually she broke both of their arms. So, Future Kale went back into her rage form and joined the fight, but even then, her attacks were doing nothing. When Kale Black went to use her Black Blaster stream, Kale, Vegeta, and Future Kale tried countering it with blasts of their own. 
This managed to push back Black's blast, but it also damaged her in the process that would also cause her to grow stronger. As Black continued growing stronger, she kept pushing the heroes back as she grievously injured Kale and Vegeta. She then turned her attention to future Kale as she started beating her back. Eventually, she kicks her away as she prepares to finish off Kale and Vegeta. Thankfully, future Kale was kicked close to Bulma and Mai, who had found what was left of her sword. Back with the heroes, even though they were down to their base forms and on their last legs, they still tried fighting Kale Black. Though their attacks did nothing, and when she went to finish them off, Kale Black was interrupted by the arrival of future Kale. She was given a sense to be my mind, so she was back in her legendary rage form, where she now held a sword made of key. Even with her slashes doing damage to Kale Black, her enemy was still growing in strength, so she was driven into a corner. When Black asked where she would flee to next, Future Kale said she isn't ashamed of her mortal weakness, as a giant bright light surrounded her. This light also surrounded all the heroes, all of Earth's resistance, and all the remaining Earthlings. A spear bomb-like sphere then formed in the sky, and Kale and Vegeta gave her their remaining energy, which all of this caused her key sword to turn into the Sword of Hope. She then used it to stab Kale Black with and cleave her in half. Since she isn't immortal like Zamasu was, this would kill Kale Black once and for all. After celebrating the defeat of Black and Zamasu, the heroes returned to the present timeline with future Kale and Mai coming too. They wanted to go so they could thank everyone else for their help and let them know that the future is safe. After doing this and having dinner together, Beerus tried to tell them not to use the time machine again, but we since he's only pointed out that Beerus himself caused a time ring to be made by erasing Zamasu. Speaking of Zamasu, Future Kale would take out the urn containing Future Zamasu. Since Beerus would be able to erase them, she would politely request for Beerus to destroy Zamasu. Since even if he was immortal, this would destroy his soul as well. Beerus would comply with this request, as he does destroy the urn of Future Zamasu as well. Future Kale and Mai then said their goodbyes, as Bulma gave them capsules with supplies. Kale complimented her future self on how strong she has grown, while Vegeta attacked her to test her strength, but she easily blocked his attack. As they prepared to leave, Piccolo and Gohan arrived, as Gohan then raised his fist, with Trunks joining in and doing the same. This caused Future Kale to be reminded of her two previous students, so she began to cry. They told her to take care of herself, but she began crying tears of joy, she said one last goodbye to everyone, and she and Mai returned to the future.